channel the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Nation Beat. Today we are talking libraries and my name is Natalie Jolipanis and it's a pleasure to host this program as we get to celebrate National Libraries Week from the 8th of April. And with me is a panel of librarians and we are going to explore the relevance, the adaptability and the evolution of libraries as we celebrate Libraries Week. So with me today, like I said, are three librarians. We have Ms. Daisy St. Rose, who is from UE Global Campus. We also have Ms. Sally Roseman, who is the director of the libraries. And we have Mrs. Melissa Emanuel, who is an assistant librarian at the Hunter J. Fosswar Library at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Welcome, ladies, and thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank Good morning you. and thank you. Great. So we're going to talk libraries today. We have a very old-fashioned view, um, let's start there, of what a library should be. So I want to get off, before we even get into talking about your week of activities, to talk about what does a library look like in the 21st century? Are we speaking just shelves and books and I don't know. What, what, what does a library look like? Let me start with our director, Ms. Rosemond. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Um, libraries at present have revolutionized its services in order to keep abreast with modern technology as it stands. Um, we now have our services more refined, um, helping us to sort of um, bridge the gap between the have and the have not when it comes to the computer and internet services and so on. Great. And I know we differentiate between public libraries and academic libraries, right? Mm -hmm. And we have two ladies here who represent the academic libraries. From your perspective, for students in particular, for academia, give me your perspective of what a 21st library looks like for them. In I can one. say that we have um, transformed from merely housing books to having a number of digital scholarly databases that our students can use and um, in pursuit of the academic um, achievements. So it's no longer necessarily sitting in the library. No. They can access information. Anytime, anywhere on their devices. So great. What about you, Ms. Andrews? Okay, so from a global perspective, what I would say is that the 21st century um, library is a dynamic and evolving institution. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, it responds um, to the changing needs of the community, of the society, and um, it is steeped in, currently you have, the, as Melissa um, indicated, you have the technological integration. Okay, so that would include things like the digital resources, such as online databases. Um, you have the virtual reference service, which is an add-on to the in-house face-to-face reference service. Um, they're also, or libraries are also focused on digital preservation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have to find ways to preserve content and information for future generations. Um, you also have community-centered spaces, so libraries acting as community-centered spaces, as community hubs, mm -hmm. where um, to increase diversity, to, in, to, to sort of be accessible, to be a, a, a place, a space where any person, regardless of economic background, status, um, what, what else, um, age, mm -hmm. and so on, can come and feel can at access. home. Yes. yes. So before we, we delve into all of these more deeply, because we will get into that, um, I want to bring in a little bit of your personal journey as well, as we talk about that 21st century library. So I hope you, you're okay with disclosing, you know, how long you've been in this profession. So in terms of what it was like when you began as a, a, a fresh librarian to, to what it is now. And particularly, I want to continue with, with you, Ms. Centrios, um, because your organization now is really online. You, yes. you are, for the most part, fundamentally virtual. Yes. 
Yes. Um, so given where you started, and if you don't mind telling us how long you know you've been in this profession. Um, I've, been, I've been working in libraries for about 30 years. Mm. I started off after I left A-level. Um, I, most of um, the persons here my, would know me, um, Melissa actually worked with me at Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, which is where I started okay. um, working in libraries. Mm -hmm. And from there, I got trained um, first at the, was it at the, the certificate level, yeah. library technical Technic assistant, assistant certificate yeah. level, and moved on to get undergrad, well, no, I did an undergrad in management, but my postgrad degree in library and information studies. And I've just continued it. But um, what I would say is that from as far as I can remember, and my siblings um, remind me of that, I always said I would be, one of the things I wanted to be was a librarian. Wow. And of course, my family members had other things like um, a lawyer and um, a, a doctor. But for whatever reason, I guess if you trust in the universe as well, I, everything seems to just fall into place in terms of librarianship for me. And so it has been a, a wonderful journey. Um, I can say when I started at Sir Arthur, we were using microfiche and, um, right. and um, <laughs> you know, you had microfiche machines and so on. But what we found over time, these things disintegrate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, today, well, let me just say, um, apart from the microfish um, machines, you also had a lot of, a lot of it was in-house, you know, it was a lot of doing, a lot of, you know, interacting with the students. Um, from, let me just trans, trans, well, move to today. Uh, what I would say is today, a lot of my work at the university as an academic librarian um, involves online interactions with the students. Um, mainly through virtual reference and through online, online collections, having online collections, online databases, and also a lot of information literacy where we, well, where I teach um, or show uh, students or patrons, or everyone for that matter, because if I say I don't want to be, you know, like um, be very specific here in terms of that, but we train persons to use the technology um, in a way that is one, cost effective, two, it, re it, it, it saves time, and three, um, it empowers the person, the individual, to know that they can get the information that they need to meet their needs, their current needs. So it, it builds independence in the speech. Yes, they have, they yes. Have more independent yes. Learners. Thank you so much for, for explaining that, that journey to us. I'll jump to, to Ms. Emmanuel. I, I don't know why I think she might be the younger of the two, maybe, <laughs> on, maybe not, in librarianship. <laughs> so Ms. Emmanuel, just tell us, in terms of looking at how, how it has transitioned, your time starting to where you are now. Like Daisy said, she wanted to be a librarian from young, but I wanted to be a teacher. Oh. And when that didn't work out for me after secondary school, I applied to a position I found in the newspaper, which was an assistant librarian at SAFA, Hunter G. Fosua Library. And oh, here I am today, 26, 27 years later. Um, I did a BSc in um, Library and Information Studies, followed by MSc in Information Studies. Um, for me, the transition, it has been significant and noticeable. Uh, our students, post-COVID too, you can see how much more the need for um, having stuff digitally um, through technology. You can see the students prefer that. So we have um, put a lot of our resources online. We have our past paper collections, our course material collections, the online. Um, we also subscribe to scholarly databases that our students can access anytime, anywhere. So sometimes we don't have the print book 
in the library, we help them search the databases online, and sometimes they get what it is that they're looking for. So complementing each other, and sometimes you find stuff different from what we have in-house. In-house, okay. And let's switch now to, to public libraries and what that experience has been like for you, Ms. Roseman. I started at the branch library in Grosley. This is Grosley Public Library. Um, for the past 28 years, uh, I started there. Um, believe you me, um, I have seen libraries unfold, um, you know, being in a branch library alone, having to encourage um, your community to be inclined into um, reading and, and so on, um, getting children, uh, as I believe that it should be, um, you capture them as they're young. So I had the opportunity of visiting our preschools in the area and developing the joy of reading amongst those preschoolers. Um, I actually worked alongside with the community in itself, um, making sure that I expose them to whatever that is available out there. So we had the, the list um, from the, the ministry where you would provide um, the priority list. So persons in the community who were inclined into further in their education, this was made available you know, through the library. So persons did um, capitalize on this. We also had the elderly whom you had to try your best to tell them the basically the necessity of having a library because for them it looked like it was just children's place a place mm -hmm. where children should come visit because they are um, into academics and they aren't so it was quite challenging through the years and embracing technology as it came by making sure that I develop myself professionally as well. Mm -hmm. So being there, I got the opportunity to attain an undergrad degree in library and information studies. So there I felt confident enough. I wasn't that confident person to actually even face even the camera or anybody for that matter. So library in itself opened me up as an individual to be able to speak and, and, and so and express myself. So um, being in this new um, post of director of library services, I am now challenged with keeping abreast with the technological changes in order to expose our community to it, which is our citizens in general, um, as opposed to my two colleagues here. Mm -hmm. um, they they have they pioneer the academic side, but I have the challenge of the public, which is a, a wider range of um, patrons that I have to deal with. Um, but all in all, we try our best. Um, I think that's why we're here to advocate, really, um, to let everybody know that we are willing to assist. Uh, and so, so, so there are two things that that I, I so you've brought up, but mm -hmm. I want to to transition into. Um, that I think are key to, to our conversation here. Mm -hmm. One is the role of the librarian mm -hmm. um, in this change. And um, two, for me, I, you mentioned it, are the technological advances. Mm -hmm. So I've heard you speak about it, but can we hone in to some of the major technological changes or advances, I would like to say, because I think it's positive. It's not just changes how you have advanced to meet the needs of the 21st century. So I don't know if each of you want to just at least point out one technological change or evolution that has happened um, with libraries. Okay. Um, when we first started, um, I suppose my two colleagues can share the same sentiments. When we first started, we were exposed to the card catalog mm -hmm. where manually we would have gone to look for our subject um, that we were researching on. Um, basically, now we have the management software, um, which is quite innovative. Um, you would go through it, and in order to look for whatever that you look for, whether it's through, through the subject, whether it is through the title, whether it is through the author, you are now able to click on there 
and able to see what resources are available in the library or elsewhere on other databases that are quite available to the patron. So um, you come in and you now have to scan your card and, and, and so on as a patron, um, what we would term like our little Massy card, what would say, <laughs> library now have a library card. <laughs> Massy card. <laughs> I'm just speaking, you know, that uh, yeah. in general, because persons would then understand uh, what type of card that we have. Um, you would generate um, your lending services through those card, through that card. So there's a, a move from paper based. Yes. Um, even in terms of searching for resources, mm -hmm. to everything being digital. Digital. Um, not necessarily everything not being everything digital means. because we do keep a backup. You must. Okay, in paper, mm -hmm. paper form. Um, as we know, the technology is constantly evolving. Um, we do not know, um, I think that we, do, we never know how long it will, as the technology evolves, if the previous one that was being used is going to be um, able to, uh, will, will be supported by the new technology. So there is always a backup, okay? But um, to add to what Sally said, you have also the advent of e-books, more and more e-books, um, also open education resources. Um, you have the online databases, Melissa mentioned that earlier on, where there are, and there are several databases. Um, she mentioned EBSCO host, you have uh, Science Direct, you have Academic Search, um, Premier and a whole host of others, which contain millions of articles um, okay, that, that students can access. Oh, well, I say students now. I'm, I'm That's speaking okay. in That's terms okay of academics. That's okay because you're in right. academics. Mm -hmm. so but let me just get you to, to hold that thought mm -hmm. because we do need to take a break. Please stay with us. We are discussing the evolution and relevance of libraries in this day and age. I'm joined by some librarians today. We'll be back in just a minute. Stay tuned. Get ready to be enchanted at the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival from April 30th to May 12th, 2024. Dance to the beats of TJ. <laughs> Yourself in jazz sensations of Samara Joy. Guess who I saw today, my dear. And John Patitucci. And let the soulful gospel of Donnie McLuhan uplift your spirit. Oh my, my, my. Feel the energy with Marshall Montano. Sway to Barris Hammond's timeless tunes. Jam to Davido's hits. Don't miss Air Supply's classics and Babyface's brilliance. Explore the full lineup and secure your tickets at St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival.com today. Welcome back to Nation Beat. We are talking about the role of libraries globally as it's being celebrated the week of the 8th. And there are several activities planned, and we'll get to that very soon. But we were talking about the technological landscape and how that has impacted the role of libraries. And um, we had two of our librarians, Ms. Roseman and Ms. St. Rose, tell us about this change from paper-based being in the library to being able to access everything virtually, swipe your card as a librarian. So we're going to move to Ms. Emanuel, who will tell us one more thing about um, the changes that have happened in the technological landscape. Um, like um, Sally mentioned, our print material, if students are not on campus, they can access our collection online, be able to see what resources we have and what we don't, and even be able to reserve material online. We, our, um, so our Fort Lewis Community College subscribes to a number of databases for the library, which are very expensive, if I must say, mm -hmm. and we encourage our students to use them by um, having workshops where we give them instruction and guidance detailed into how to access this res these resources and to be able to apply it to their studies. Can, can I just further ask, um, I, I hear about the availability about the academic resources, but we find young people now are, are, are generally 
moved by visuals. Is there any multimedia access that is provided? Um, our scholarly database is on an app now. Okay. So students can access that through their mobile phones, through their tablets. And the wonderful thing about that app is with or without Wi-Fi, the students are able to access the information that they downloaded onto their devices. That's beautiful. When yes. we talk about the digital divide, that will definitely come, come into yeah. play. So great changes where we're meeting the students where they are right. in this 21st century. Like you said, particularly post-COVID, where we were really forced to move into that, into that virtual space. Um, so I, I, I hear how the role of library still seems to be the same, correct me if I'm wrong, even if you have moved from the physical interaction into the virtual space, are there changes that we need to recognize? Where we must recognize mm -hmm. because now everything is digital and it's technology. There's so much information out there. Mm -hmm. How do you de um, decipher? How do you pick out what's credible and what's not? Mm -hmm. So it's libra librarians' role now to instruct our students, our users, on how to locate reliable, accurate information that is out there. Mm -hmm. yes. you want yes. to join me? Um, I, well, I could su support what uh, Melissa is saying. Um, persons are of the view that um, librarians or libraries are no more. Um, really and truly, we are the most credible persons that can secure um, <laughs> information for persons. Um, we are trained in order to um, get the authenticity of material, the you know, things that we would be able to look for in order to um, cipher between fake news and what is uh, supposed to be real. Mm -hmm. um, we have empowered ourselves by um, becoming digital, uh, train ourselves in digital literacy in order to adapt, you know, to help our patrons as they go along. Um, so having this online training mm -hmm. um, makes us more efficient to assist our patrons uh, and, and so on. I suppose my colleagues here would be more into it with um, the artificial intelligence and the e-content and, and, and so um, for us in the public library this is forthcoming because they've got the text now in the e-content which the Ministry of Education has launched. Um, we anticipate that this would help students or the average um, citizenry. Um, so more or less the library would adapt some of those in order to help as well um, in making it more accessible to everybody. Um, so we have really transformed, I must say. So the role of librarians in order to keep abreast, you need to keep on training. You need to keep on training. I would reiterate because we would be no more. Yeah, we, we, would. So we, we have, have to, to be on the cutting edge. Yeah, we um, have to keep updating ourselves, ourselves. Um, keep our professional development going in order mm -hmm. to remain relevant. Yes, know? a good yeah. professional practice. So then can you speak to some of the innovative ways that you have tried to stay connected with your, your various groups, whether it be community um, or, or your students? Um, I'm hearing workshops. How, how are you attracting students to become more literate in this information age? So what we do, we have online tutorials where we, you don't have to come in person, we can set up one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with you online or we can have groups. Well, for us at the Academic Library, sometimes we have a lecturer um, making an appointment for a virtual um, session where we impart information literacy skills, critical thinking skills through these um, sessions to our students to empower them, to make them lifelong learners. Yes. Okay. Any other um, examples of, of how you have become innovative in, in trying to reach community or, or students? Mm. 
for us at the public library, we engage in um, programs for children. Mm -hmm. So we have um, programs at different intervals where they've got um, the vacation programs. You have um, the Easter, summer, and so on. These, um, I make it mandatory that um, library skills be part of those um, programs um, to remain current, to re remain more visible, to promote the library because uh, we find uh, persons of the view they could access everything through their homes mm -hmm. and, and so on. Then the library becomes, um, to them, it becomes obsolete. But I don't see that happening, not now or ever, if we remain um, on the beat. So you find through those programs, we try our best to get the children engaged in any form of digital literacy that is there. We also um, involve information literacy, go to schools, speak about you know, the library and let them know how innovative the library could be. Um, you know, so within, within your physical space, if a student comes in or a patron comes in, mm -hmm. is there any kind of interactive, do you have stations with uh, um, computers where they can engage? What, what is the physical space like yes. in terms of the technological advancement as okay. well? Yes, there is. We actually have a section at um, Central Library, which is the computer room. So persons do come in. Mind you, persons do come in with their own devices. They can access the Wi-Fi wi free of charge. So that is, um, that is, that is a, a, a step for us, yes. that now a public library is a space where you can come to access Wi-Fi right, right. because you know, still people don't have those yep. in their homes yes. and in some communities as well. Yes. Okay. So, so, be, uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. so beyond the physical space, there's this comfort of sitting and accessing your personal device mm -hmm. and having the avenue to, to do as you please. Um, with the computer room, you find that there's a little timing because you want to facilitate everybody. So time is being allotted to patrons um, as per their needs as well, because you get some persons just coming for entertainment uh, and so. Mm -hmm. So you would limit the timing offered as opposed to somebody who is probably doing some academic stuff or um, some online study or some kind of so conference. There, there are two avenues. Yes. There's where you provide the devices that people yes. can come in to use. Yes. And you and also have a facility where people can come in with, with their, their devices. personal devices. Yes, yeah. that's definitely sure. a plus. We do <coughs> have a set of computers. We would love for it to have been a computer lab, but with space. So we do have computers that students can come to and if they need one-on-one -on -one instruction on how to go about searching, research support. We do that with them there. We also um, have recently subscribed to a laptop loan program where students can come and loan a laptop mm -hmm. for a week, a month, the semester um, okay. from us. Yes, because we know a lot of our students are not as fortunate and not as you know, so we provide that avenue for them to be able to be on the same terms as their colleagues who have. So that is definitely bridging that digital yes. divide mm -hmm. that we know is now so crucial um, in the 21st century um, because a lot of academic institutions at least are doing a hybrid. It's not just coming into the class face to face, but there's content that they have to access online. So that, that is definitely a plus. I am assuming that UE Global um, has the same, well, not necessarily coming into loan, but what, what kind of facilities do you have to bridge that digital divide? Um, we have, well, we have the Wi-Fi access, and we also have some computers, a few computers available in the library, as well as on-site we have a, a computer lab. So students, um, in the past students, you know, I think uh, maybe you would have used the teleconference room, <laughs> which is no longer so now everybody accesses um, their course content from their from 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 their home or if they want to come to the library they do that mm -hmm. you know so you 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 can access it anywhere you can you, you could have traveled and you you can you're able to access your um, to attend your class through blackboard um, collaborate yeah. for example mm -hmm. 
Um, one of the things that we have explored or trialed is the use of what is called the metaverse. Mm -hmm. um, and we did an initiative with the, I think it was with the United, um, was it United, not, not, it wasn't United Nations, um, it was the bank, uh, bank, the World Bank, yes, where, which is a very interactive, um, virtual reality kind of vibe. Mm. And um, I actually did an information literacy session with students using that, um, that method, and it was well received. Um, in fact, my, my sons, who are now 16 and 9, were quite interested in it. And even up to um, this earlier this week, the youngest is asking, Mommy, can you log into, into this so that I can, I can you know, participate in it, I can play with it. So it, it's taken, you know, we can see that there are the, 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 impre the improvements in technology. There are opportunities for libraries to meet the user at the point that they're at, you know. Um, and I think we are not there yet in St. Lucia, but I know that for um, in other libraries globally that I have visited, certainly that um, these aspects are really um, playing a major role in how they, in the services that they actually provide to their patrons and to the community. As you raise the virtual reality um, and the World Bank, there is a, a project that, that the college is involved in as well. So in terms of, and I know you say you keep up with the training, um, but how much do you think libra librarians and libraries are being integrated into the new strategies, the new teaching and learning strategies for which virtual reality is now one. Is that something that you think you need to advocate for? Um, in, in terms, I see, for example, an ICT center is being opened separate from a library. Um, what are your thoughts on, on things like that? And this is your opportunity to advocate. This is what this panel is for. So I'm opening it up for you to speak to that. I mean, if that is the direction that the world is going in, um, and this is where a lot of our students are, I see no reason why we shouldn't be, we shouldn't get into the action, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the use of computers and libraries integrating with each other, I think that is something we definitely need to advocate. So in, in the academic setting, does the library sit at the table with the academics? And that, that should be for community as well, um, in terms of the advances that are, that are being made there, because for content is going into the virtual reality realm. Um, and you, you're in the pocket of everything else. So this is the next step for libraries? <laughs> Challenge? I think we should be integrated, really. <laughs> we are not, I would yes, say, we are yes. not integrated as much. Yes. Um, maybe even, although at the academic level, we are in the, you know, the um, cost development aspects. Okay, we we do cool. work with, with the, the coordinators and so on in developing, um, when they're developing the, the course content for the university. However, um, my observation in general is that a lot of a lot of um, institutions and okay let's let's uh, yeah a lot of institutions do not perhaps they do not see libraries and librarians as key as key um, yeah, stakeholders, yeah. stakeholders yeah. in in the development the development of, the of whatever it, or whatever initiatives that they have mm -hmm. yeah. um, if we look at it in schools for example okay so lots of lots of students are getting devices mm -hmm. however how many students can actually even, let me just, I'm not even going to say search for something. 
use word properly. I have three children and you know, I, I, I try to teach them because they can do every other thing on the device, their phones, their computers, um, tablets, whatever it is. They can do every other thing. And the minute, I mean, I'm a librarian, the minute my son, for example, my older son, needs some information, it's as if I'm the walking encyclopedia. <laughs> Mommy, um, what is this, that, and the other? So, of course, it becomes a teachable lesson. Mm -hmm. We go get the device, and you know, you, you show them how to, how they can even use um, the simple, uh, an internet search engine, for example, mm -hmm. depending on the words you put in there how you can get the information that you actually need. So there are things like Boolean operators, what is called Boolean operators, where you use or or and, not. you know, not, and so on, to tweak the results that you will actually get, mm -hmm. okay? And I mean, these are very simple, simple things. Students come, come to us, um, or come to me, um, and they have an assignment, and they will put the entire assignment question. yes the entire question is just laid there miss I would like information on and I have to read the entire assignment so of course it becomes another teachable lesson um, usually I would have a consultation with a student um, I get them to think about related terms broad terms narrow terms other words that um, you can use that relate to the same topic and then if they're not okuwa as we say with the topic, then I may send them to do um, an internet search, do a Google search, okay? Just to get yourself to brainstorm, to, to find out what slant you really want to take on that assignment. Because otherwise, if I give you the information, then I am just, it's my perspective, right? And so I want them, it, it has to be them feeling empowered and them feeling that yes, I'm doing this for me. So the information literacy, literacy is, is critical, critical and that again speaks to the role of librarians yeah. and you have mm -hmm. to transcend all those different levels. Yeah. So we're taking a quick break again. When we come back, stay with us, when we come back, we will talk about community engagement and the activities planned for 2024 National Library Week. Stay with us. Fisher folk in St. Lucia are facing many negative effects of climate change. La vie peut être difficile parce que pour ça les plus fond, on s'en donne pour acheter plus fuel pour faire jouer les lames, on donne pour dépenser plus la gasoline. En raison ça, la vie peut être un peu difficile. Parti où il a ces bails qui affecte nous à la vie, il qui affecte vivre nous, il qui affecte canaux nous et il qui affecte nos machines. Aussi, il qui affecte placement pêche. Si on cherche, c'est pour ça c'est difficile pour pêcher ça à assurer quand d'autres choses après la meilleure et puis pour adopter le changement du climat. Climate change is happening. Are you prepared? Changement climat qu'a fait. Est-ce que vous préparez? Welcome back to Nation Beat and our discussion on libraries as we get to celebrate National Libraries Week. We are talking relevance, we're talking adaptability, we're talking about transformation and evolution of libraries. And when we left off talking to, to Ms. St. Rose, who is the librarian at Jury Global Campus, we were looking at how libraries need to be part of the conversation. Um, at all levels so that they are properly able to inform their stakeholders. So let's extend that to talk about the various collaborations, therefore, that libraries need to make and some of the community engagements that, that libraries need to be part of to ensure their space um, in our education sector in particular. So let's start with collaborations. Are there any key collaborations that library has made, needs to make to cement their space? For us in the academic library at South Louis Community College, one of our major collaborators are our faculty. We engage with them um, continually to 
integrate our resources onto their platforms, to integrate information literacy into their um, different subjects, so we can instruct students on how to search for information, how to um, pick from the information what is credible and what is not, how to integrate the information that they get into their projects, into their essays. So faculty at a college is one of our major stakeholders. What we have started doing for the past couple years is even bring our collaboration further to the community. We host um, a poetry slam competition and we have an author talk series where we go into the community, we get persons to collaborate with us. For our poetry slam, we have um, persons in the community like Adrian Oje, like um, the Hippolytes who coach our students um, and assist them in coming up with poems that they can um, perform. For our author talks, we have persons like Rick Wayne, um, Don French, McDonald Dixon, um, and we invite them to come in to speak with our students, you know, to scholarly minds imparting their knowledge to our students to make them even better. So these are some of the collaborations that we have um, embarked on for the past couple of years. There seems to be a focus on, on the creative there. Yes, um, Not just academic, but getting students to see the value of libraries even in the creative development? Yeah, and that's tied into our, you know, we are the um, managers for the Derek Walcott Library. Mm -hmm. So Derek Walcott was an arts person, so we just carry in the trend to develop our students in that regard. Okay. Any other collaborations that we can speak to? Mm. For the public library, we have gone where we hosted um, Lit Fest, um, a literary festival where we integrate with the community as a whole. Um, we had um, persons in the creative art um, perform a poetry song. We had the schools involved because you know we have a wider um, um, spectrum of persons to deal with. So the schools were invited, and so. Um, bearing in mind that um, Reading Month is coming up, we're looking forward to uh, hosting a number of activities at the library to get the children to come in, because as far as we're concerned, we need people coming in um, to, to keep the, <laughs> the, this um, stigma, um, you know, uh, that libraries are no longer relevant. So we need to be able to embrace them coming in and to see what we have to offer and what really has transformed, you know, libraries on the whole. Let me just, just put that at you. Where are the school libraries? How you see coming? Is it us coming into the, the community into library? Into the community as, library. As director, are you also responsible for the libraries that used to exist at schools? Uh, funny enough, I was exposed to that question just yesterday. <laughs> 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 when I assumed the role of um, library services, um, uh, this was not under my umbrella. But a lot of questions have been geared at me with um, reference to this. Um, I may have to look into it, but as far as I know now, um, I'm responsible for Central Library and the branch libraries. Um. So only the community libraries? Yes. So school libraries would fall under the Ministry of Education? Yes, it would be. Then that means that's a key collaboration that you you need to develop uh, it. Yeah. Um, because if, if it's right at the doorstep of, of the students, then they will transfer that into the communities maybe mm, when yeah. they go home? Just think. I, I, I should think so. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you're saying... But I'm ready to embrace them, really, because um, it's, it's a sad story. Um, you know, Through the years, we know that they had all changed to LRCs, um, Learning Resource Centers, and so on. So I suppose you know, um, I was not in the capacity to probably... Um, Make so libraries in schools have changed to learning resource centers, yeah, they were which is a key part of what librarians do. Yeah, so exactly. Yes. So are, are these learning resource centers manned by librarians? No, Absolutely not. not. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're delving into the work that yeah. that library needs to do. Uh, and that's yes. what, what Library Week is, is supposed to, to bring out. Yeah. Um, so let's hope there's a a mindset change where mm -hmm. that is concerned. Yeah, 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 we've, we've placed that on the agenda of yes. the Director of Library Services. <laughs> <laughs>
So what I, what I would say um, in relation to the stakeholders is that every single person, for example, every single um, St. Lucian should be, uh, well, is rather, a stakeholder mm -hmm. of libraries, okay? Um, and if I want to get even, well, just to, I could just name some sectors. You have the, the governments, you have businesses, um, non-profits, academia, uh, disability organizations. Mm -hmm. All of those are All of those, yes, mm -hmm. um, yes, need to be, or are stakeholders. And, you know, the, the, the whole um, point is that we want to have, we want to advance accessibility and inclusivity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the only way to do that is by knowing, well, first of all, having the support, okay, mm -hmm. which has been lacking. And it's not just um, locally that it's lacking. I was reading an article last night um, for a library in the U.S. from 1949, and they had similar issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, even issues with library workers themselves who may not, while they, I guess they enjoy what they do, sometimes they may not be advocates for themselves. And so it starts with us. I think the super majority, okay, if I want, if I want to say it like that, it starts with us to advocate, to begin advocating and coming together um, to try to advance our profession, first of all, and the role that we can play or the role that we do play in helping to build the society and empower individuals. And then from there, um, you know, sort of encouraging or inspiring other individuals within the community, the businesses, the, the layperson, whatever, to join us in those efforts to be champions for libraries and librarians. Great, that's a good way to segue into how you are going to do that or how you have done that for this week of um, recognizing National Libraries Week. So let's talk a little bit about your activities and how you are increasing your visibility um, within the St. Lucian Society. How, how, how are you starting off this week? Uh, we are starting off by um, having a Thanksgiving service where all librarians on the island um, will um, culminate at the La Quamingo SDA Church. Um, so persons from across the island will be there in attendance um, for this Thanksgiving. Um, we follow the, for the next day with the Next day is the library, library workers, workers day. day. Yeah. Yes. So the library workers will be treated. Um, for us at the central library, we have a sip, chat, and paint um, oh. session um, there. Um, the following days, we will be working, um, carrying out outreach in Grosley. We are looking forward to reopening the Grosley Public Library um, the week of the 16th. On the Saturday, um, since school is closed, you find like it's a bit tedious for us um, hosting so many of our, our activities. So on the Saturday, we look forward to having um, a day with the volunteers. So the St. Lucia Retirees Association will be reading to s children mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the Rotaract Club of St. Lucia will be reading to children on that Saturday of the 13th. In the communities? in the communities as well as central library okay mm. so you start off with the, the church service so in in celebration or in recognition of libraries workers day mm -hmm. um, um i hear what the central library will be doing each institution mm -hmm. um is doing their own thing mm -hmm. to celebrate each other and the workers at their library okay. so hunter j first while library will be doing something as well to um, recognize the hard work that we do every day. Um, on Friday, April 12th, one of our activities is an author talks lecture where we'll be inviting two authors um, 
to impart to our students the processes involved and what it takes to be an author um, just in case they have their minds eyes set on that kind of thing. On April 17, we host a student debate at the South Louis Community College with the moat libraries in St. Lucia are antiquated, antiquated relics no longer essential in the digital age. That promise to be ex promises to be exciting. The students are excited and we are looking forward to to having to that. hearing their perspective yes. on whether libraries mm -hmm. are really a relic. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it, it seems you you have to go more than a week. It, it can't be libraries week anymore. The the week might be too short a period. Yeah. Um, because I know with Hunter J. Fasoir, you spanning almost three weeks, starting with the Wood of Poetry competition um, the week before, and then then leading up into your activities. Um, does UE Global have any um, plans for? Okay, well, um, as you know, we're a very small team in Are locally. Are you the sole librarian? Yes, but I have some part-time persons who come in on a Saturday. Well, one part-time person who comes in on a Saturday. Uh, <coughs> so my initiative, or the UE's initiative, um, in collaboration with the local library association, NALIP St. Lucia, will be a one-day symposium, um, not happening next week, but happening in May in collaboration with Reading Month. So the theme for Library Week this year is for a richer, fuller life, read. read. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that, you know, this having this one-day symposium where we, it will invite stakeholders not just librarians or library workers, but inv and invite various stakeholders to participate in this event can help us to advocate more for libraries and to showcase the importance of, um, of libraries for the development of our people and our, um, our society. And also foster a, love, a greater love for reading um, as well, which I think is important and key. So who, who are the key stakeholders that you expect to be part of that symposium? Um, well, we want to invite, um, well, uh, we will be inviting um, principals. There will be students. Okay. Um, we hope to, well, the business, oh. right? Just various um, NGOs, just participants from all over. So it's a, a cross-section yes. of, of the stakeholders. Yes. And that would be at your location on the Yes, it would be taking place at the UWI Open um, Global Campus, sorry, at Mon Fortune. So more details um, will come. All right. So are these all of the activities for, for Library Week and observance of, of Library Week? To get a full listing of the um, activities, you can follow Hunter J. Faswa Library on Instagram and Facebook. We're also on YouTube where we have videos of um, instructional videos for our students who want to participate in lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. yes, so you can follow us. That's a good multimedia tool yes. that we could speak of with the technological advancement. Yes. That's definitely mm -hmm. one of them. What about the public library? Anything else? Um, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the opening with the church service, mm -hmm. um, and then you have the day where you celebrate the librarians, yeah. and uh, there are some individual activities that each of you will be, mm -hmm. will be doing. Um, yeah. Is there also a, a page for the national libraries? Yes, there's the Facebook pages um, for the individual libraries as well as central library. It's just a Facebook page um, for now. What's the yeah. website? I don't have a website. Um, it is not the Facebook. Um, it's the Facebook for, for National Libraries. Central Library of St. Lucia. Central Library of mm -hmm. St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. so and of course, they can follow the NALIP St. Lucia page where mm -hmm. I always um, share. share various... Um, Just remind us of what NALIP is. National Association of Librarians and Information Professionals of St. Lucia. So you can follow that page on Facebook where we usually link all the other libraries' um, information, their notices, and so on, and also provide some very um, good resources that persons can benefit from. 
Okay, great. Uh, and uh, if you're viewing this, this activity, this panel discussion is, is part of an activity called Take Action for yeah, Libraries yeah. Day, where you were keen on educating individuals um, about the role of libraries. We spoke to the relevance of libraries and, and the adaptability. Um, we did not, although Ms. Centros spoke to the theme, um, we didn't delve into it a little more, just in terms of the emphasis on, on reading. Um, I heard the activity from Central Library being focused on, on reading to, to students. Mm -hmm. but, but can we make that link, particularly with the activities that Hunter Jefferson has, where they encourage the poetry and the debate? Um, can we just make that link with, with libraries and the importance of reading, especially in this information age where people access information in any way? Um, I'm trying, I didn't get the question, sorry. Uh, we, we, just an encouragement to read. Just this final thing mm -hmm. as we go off and we speak to your theme, just in 30 seconds. Well, in order to um, expand your knowledge base and uh, expand your perspective on things, it's important to read from a number of different genres so you can have a wide appreciation of what's happening and everything that's going on around you. Thank you so very much. We are taking action for libraries today. Let me thank Mrs. Emanuel from the Hunter G. Fosuar Library, Ms. Roseman, who's the Director of Library Services, and Ms. St. Rose, who is at UE Global Campus, for joining us today to talk about the relevance of libraries. Celebrate a librarian this week. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Natalie Jolie Fanis. <laughs>